This 2000 Silverado 1500 Stepside is the brand new project truck that I just picked up for the channel. I brought it home last week and when we got it here it actually wouldn't run at all. So I had to throw a new fuel pump in it to get fuel pressure restored and then we took it for a drive and I kind of figured everything is a-okay. But that actually couldn't have been further from the truth because the truck did have several more issues that we needed to correct after it had been sitting for the better part of a year. My name's LT, and on this channel, we build custom and high-performance trucks, so if that content appeals to you, help me out and hit that subscribe button so we can get to 100,000 subs by the end of 2021. So, with the 2000 Silver out of the brand new project truck, like I said, we put a new fuel pump in it, we took it out for a test drive, and at first, everything seemed to be doing what it should. I was just happy that the truck ran, it shifted great, the air conditioning was working, the radio picked up most of the stations around here, and I thought, we're, I mean, we're good to go, but... The more and more I drove it, the more I kind of realized we're definitely a little bit low on power from where we should be. I mean, the 4.8s, they make like, what, 280 horsepower maybe? And even though it's a fairly heavy truck with 280 horsepower, I actually remembered I did own a 4.8 powered Silverado back in Tennessee for about a year. And even though that one had like 250,000 miles on it, I do like old high mile trucks. Uh, even though that one did have 250,000 miles on it, it just felt like it had a ton more power than this one did here. So we had to do a little bit of investigating to find out what was going on because sometimes when you take off, it would feel okay. And other times when you take off, it just felt like it was down on power by like 20 or 30%. Sometimes it would kind of like surge. When you put your foot into it, it would like pull hard and then kind of give up and then pull hard again. And it was just all over the place. So we had to do a little bit of investigating we had to do some data logging actually. So I got my laptop out. We've got HP tuners we're running on here, plugged in the scan tool and I went for a drive. When I went to get my registration, that's probably like a 30 mile drive away. I just let the data logger do its thing and we grabbed a whole bunch of data and it actually kind of helped me narrow down what was going on. First off, I just wanted to cover some of the things that I'm looking for in a data log whenever I'm doing basic diagnostic work. And it's just kind of the simple stuff that the engine uses to operate. You know, load sensing, you've got spark tables, you've got fuel tables and a whole bunch of other stuff. But here's the basics that I look for. You've got your engine RPM, speed, throttle position, and then a few temperatures just to keep an eye on how things are working. You know, there's no trans temp gauge in the truck, but the computer actually knows how hot the transmission is. You know, if you get some fuel related stuff here, injector pulse width, you know, map pressure, that's pretty important to know. Um, then we get some timing related things in this middle group here, air mass, timing advance, and then just all the knock retard related stuff. There's a couple different ways the computer will pull timing back. And I wanted to know all of those. And then you've got some fuel related stuff down here. You've got your commanded air fuel ratio. First of all, that's what the engine is trying to go for. And then you've got the O2 voltages, fuel trims, both short and long term, and then just a few more transmission things on the bottom, you know, what gear it's in and whether or not the torque converter is being applied. And then finally, how much torque the engine is calculated to be making at that instance in time. So I did the drive to the DMV, like I said, it's probably 30 miles or so. And the first thing that I looked at was this histogram right here, and this is the long-term fuel trims. And right away, you'll notice a lot of these values are trending on the positive side, which means it's adding fuel to achieve its desired air fuel ratio, which Normally you want these to be, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of plus or minus five. There's going to be some variance in here. But if you look at a lot of these, you know, this is on the maximum values right here on this left hand column. This is only 400 RPM that's idle, but you know, 25% in a lot of cases along the wide open throttle area down here along the bottom, you've got nine, 16, 16, 11, a lot of 12s and 16s kind of in the middle here and kind of at this lower load, higher RPM zone in here, it does get a little bit closer to five, but I noticed it's definitely all trending positive, which means it's having to add more fuel than it thinks it needs to achieve its desired air fuel ratio. Now, uh, back up a little bit, we did have some old gas in this truck. And as you probably know, old gas gets a little bit gummy and varnishy. And I kind of figured, well, the old gas has just clogged up the injectors. It's not able to flow quite as much fuel with the same pulse width that it was able to do before. So I'll have the injector swapped out because I did have some 8.1 injectors just kind of laying around when I took them out of my 8.1 when I swapped in the uh, FIC 1000cc injectors in there. Uh, and the 8.1 injector is a little bit bigger. So if I do say add a camshaft, a cold air intake or other performance upgrades that increase the power of the 8.1, I'll just have a little bit more horsepower capacity in the fuel system with the larger injectors. Plus they were free. So I figured, you know what? It's gonna cost me nothing. We'll swap them out.
There's two great things about using 8.1 injectors. Number one, they're a factory sized injector, so they'll plug right into the 4.8 liter intake manifold, as well as the 5.3s and the 6.0s. With zero modifications, and it uses the same injector connector as well, so basically it's plug and play. And the other good thing is it uses factory injector data, and since I happen to have a bunch of 8.1 tune files lying around, I was able to simply copy and paste all the different injector parameters, you know, stuff that characterizes how much fuel the injector flows, and and dump it into my stock 4.8 tune, flash it on the truck, and I did change a few other odds and ends. Uh, nothing in terms of how the performance of the engine is, but you know, I adjusted the shift points a little bit because I like my transmission to shift a little different than stock. I think I removed the speed limit or just a few other, you know, house cleaning items, stuff that I don't like. But the bulk of the tune is untouched. You don't have to change your VE tables, you don't have to change your mass airflow sensor scaling as long as you know, the truck is tuned properly and it's a stock tune, so you can just swap in new injector data and be on your way. Now, I did notice when I was taking the injectors out, I popped the uh, vacuum hose off the pressure regulator and we had a bunch of fuel come out of there, which is a dead giveaway that the little diaphragm inside has been, you know, ruptured. So you do need, or I did need a new pressure regulator, which will also help my long-term fuel trim situation as well. And that actually was probably the main cause of the fuel trims being out of whack because without having the right amount of vacuum being applied on the back of the regulator, fuel pressure is lower than usual, which means it's gonna deliver less fuel. So we did go for a drive, and I logged the same exact parameters on long-term fuel trim. I still have the maximum values displayed here, and as you can see, they are quite a bit lower, and if you click on the average to show how it kind of scales out, we are pretty much within where we want to be. A lot of these are plus or minus five, still definitely on the plus side, but the values are much closer to that five target rather than being, you know, 10 and 12 and 15, and in some cases as high as 20. So. It was probably mostly the regulator that did that, but I was happy to install the injectors anyway, because like I said, we're probably gonna be throwing a cam and some other stuff in here, and the injectors will just give me more capacity for horsepower for whenever that time comes. So, no harm, no foul, we went for the drive, but then I started looking, and the symptom, you know, how the truck felt, the surging and the pulling, it didn't really change. So the next thing that we had to look at was Spark Advance. So in the main chart we have right here, knock retard is in red on this third row across. And as you can see, this spiky line here, it is going all over the place. Like right here, it's pulling four and a half degrees. Here it's pulling seven, almost eight degrees, you know, seven and a half. So it's just pulling timing like crazy because the knock sensors are saying, hey, this thing is knocking, let's pull some timing back to keep this safe. So remember the old gas, that's gonna rear its ugly head once again, because at this point when I took this log, we still had the original unknown how old it is gas in the tank. And like I said, it was full. I had really no way to get rid of, you know, I think those tanks will hold 25 gallons. I've got no way to get rid of 25 gallons of old gasoline. Uh, so I just, I ran it out as much as I could. I got it to a little bit below half of a tank, but when I was taking this log, it kind of dawned on me Old gas actually will lose octane over time. It's, I don't know exactly how the chemistry works, but basically stuff evaporates and as it does, it loses some of its octane rating. It becomes more easy to self-ignite with compression, which is not what you want to have happen in a gas engine. So that's where the knock sensor is picking up that activity. So I figured, you know what, we've got to do something to get rid of this old gas. So luckily I have a couple of gas cans lying around. And what I did was uh, I pulled the main fuel pressure line off on the top of the fuel pump pump. I put just a short, you know, six foot section of rubber hose on there, just standard three eighths rubber hose, ran the other end into a just traditional gas can. And then I jumped the fuel pump relay up under the hood and I just let that thing run out. And by this point, I only had nine gallons left and I'll just run it through the lawnmower or something like that. But I wanted to get it out of the truck because it was causing all this knock activity. I mean, if you look here, we're at 40% throttle. That's this yellow trace up top. Over here, we're even less, 30% throttle, and it's still knocking like crazy. Over here, 37%, uh, and this just continues on and on all over the place. You've got knock activity that's going nuts, and you should see, you know, all vehicles are gonna pull a tiny bit of timing with, you know, good gas in there. It's just kind of a knock sensor picks up noise, but usually you'd expect to see like, 0.1, 0 0.3, or maybe one degree, and is only every now and again, not all the time like this. So um, we drained the gas out, like I said, and then we went for another test drive, and I'll bring that log up next. 
Oh, and one more thing real quick on the old gas log. Check this out. This is my knock retard table. Once again, average values, RPM across the top, similar air mass along the side. This thing is pulling tons of timing everywhere, and this is just the average. So once again, check out the max values. It is going nuts. I think the highest I see right here, eight degrees of timing. We shouldn't see any of this, or you know, we should see just a fraction of what we have in this table. So as soon as we had all the old gas drained out, or as much as I could drain out with still being able to drive the truck to the gas station, I filled it up with 91 octane and the thing cuts off at 100 bucks, which was like 20, 21 gallons maybe. So it wasn't quite all the way, but now the ratio of old gas to new gas is like totally in favor of brand new 91 octane. So we should be a lot less susceptible to knocking. Now there is a tiny bit of old stuff left in there, but I think by this point, most of it has been flushed out. So once again, I went for a drive, did a lot of the same varying conditions and stuff, and the log immediately looks a whole lot better. So if we go to our charts down here, uh, once again, knock retard is the same red line in the same middle row. And I'll just kind of briefly scan across here and you can see there's a little blip right here. Uh, and this was after I let off the gas. There's another little blip. Let's see, we get a scroll across. Nothing, nothing, another little blip right here. But basically that big jagged line where it was pulling timing all the time is gone. So we knew right away and I was actually expecting this to take like 10 minutes of driving, but like as soon as I took off, I could notice a difference in power. And the log shows that where there's basically zero timing being pulled. So if we look at our averages on the graph up here, um, the highest we have is 1.9. And even if we go to our maximums, uh, that looks a whole lot better as well. Yeah, we've got a couple of fives, a couple of sixes and stuff like that, but we are so much better you know, than we had before. So now we have the truck running a whole lot nicer, a whole lot smoother. It feels a little bit more powerful. I mean, it still is a 4.8 and it still is bone stock, but it now kind of feels like a 4.8 should rather than like a 4.3 V6. I'm happy that we found the fuel pressure regulator that would have needed to have been replaced anyway. I would have been probably chasing that for a little while. And I'm super glad I just took the time to pump out all that old rotten gas and replace it with new. Um, if you're gonna store a vehicle for a long amount of time and you've got cheap gas in it, definitely put some fuel stabilizer in there. You know, stable is inexpensive. Fill it up, let it mix around and do its thing before you park something forever because it will cause you problems later on down the line. I'm pretty sure that the fuel pump, the reason why that went bad is because it was plugged up with old fuel varnish stuff. Um, the injectors, I don't think were necessarily bad, but I was happy to replace them anyway. I am still going to run some injector cleaner through the tank just to try to clean out any residual varnish or nastiness that's in there. Uh, but the truck is making a whole lot better power now and it feels a lot stronger and I'm glad we went through the effort to make these changes. So got to say thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, still can't get the truck to do a burnout, but now that we have all the mechanical problems for the most part fixed, now we can start actually tuning it to increase the performance of it rather than just fixing it up. So uh, next time I've got some parts for the AT4 we can install on the front end. I'm still going to give you guys an update on this truck. We're about ready to do the first fire up. We're going to do some wiring on the 408 Windsor. Um, who knows? I've always got different projects. I'm kind of scatterbrained. I'm going every which way. Uh, I do need to get a converter for the ugly truck. That's another thing. I want to go back to the drag strip and take a big chunk of time off our eighth mile ET. Whew. So it's just a matter of deciding what we're going to do next. Thank you guys. You're awesome. We'll catch you next time.